morning, everyone. Welcome. I am really glad to have you guys joining me today. We are going to talk about uh, plans, goals, and dreams, as well as resilience. And uh, today is January 9th, and we are first week into January and I look forward to hearing what your goals and dreams and plans are maybe some of the habits you guys are creating good morning Tammy for those of you that are new to Treyer Wilderness my name is Tammy Treyer I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho with my mountain man junior and my mountain man and uh, we educate on our faith-based lifestyle here we are uh, very self-reliant, uh, enjoy uh, sharing our knowledge on off-grid living, homesteading, wilderness survival, and uh, how we are led to live our lives. So I welcome you. If you're new, be sure to say hello. Let us know that you're joining us. We have an awesome, awesome community of people. I am so thrilled at the community of people we have created. Uh, you guys are the heroes in this journey as well. So when I ask you questions, please be feel free to answer and chime in and join in and get involved in the conversation because this isn't all about me. This is just an open platform for us all to get together and share. So as I mentioned, today is talking about goals, plans, dreams, and ultimately resilience. And uh, it's like for the love of perspectives on goals, plans, and dreams, right? Every time you turn around on the internet right now, you have someone saying, yeah, yeah, goals, dreams, plans, and then someone saying, what's the point? I hate them, you know? So chime in here. Tell me, what are your thoughts on, on the subject? How does it work for you? For me, I need goals and plans and dreams in my life. Um, it makes it exciting, it makes it helpful, it eliminates overwhelm. Tammy and I were talking yesterday in regard to that and I will share on that subject, but chime in with me and share with me um, what your thoughts are on uh, creating plans and goals and having dreams in your life as well as um, habits. I, I like creating new habits, I like getting rid of old nasty ones and I like creating new ones that brighten and improve my life which I will also share about good morning Jill I'm so glad to have you guys joining me I am drinking some chai tea this morning in my mug from my dear friend Rachel and I want to share something with you while you guys are chiming in look at this beauty this is a solid one-piece rolling pin I have been looking for one of these babies for a long time and this was gifted to me for Christmas by my friend Mona. Mama Mona gifted this to me and I am just so thrilled. This makes me feel like a real pioneer in my kitchen with this big old rolling pin and today we'll be making bread and uh, we make all from scratch desserts. Well everything from scratch. There are a few things that we uh, purchase non-GMO processed, but I'm making all of our snack bars, our um, sweet treats, and our breads today. So Tammy says, yes to goals and plans and dreams. Keeps me on track. Yeah, exactly. For me too. I um, let, me, let me share my conversation that I had with Tammy yesterday. Um, last week, I mentioned to you guys that I had a phone call to make that would ultimately direct my family's future. And I made that phone call. And after I made that phone call, I was blessed with such a peace. I did not have answers. Uh, but I was blessed with just such a peace and such a weight off my shoulders. So, you know, I want to encourage you when you guys have something really heavy, really extreme in your life to deal with, just deal with it. And don't procrastinate, don't put it off, because there is so much to be said about dealing with those things immediately and moving on. Um, I truly believe the enemy uses those things as a toy and a tool to really weigh us down and to really keep us without direction, okay? So if you have heavy things in your life, don't put them off, don't procrastinate, just bull right into them, head right into them, and, and, and deal with them, get them over with, because I cannot tell you or express to you the extreme peace I had after I made that phone call. 
I did not get answers um, until yesterday. Well, Monday. Monday is when we got answers. Good morning, Diana. Diana says, good morning. Thank God for the peace he gives even when he doesn't change our circumstances. Exactly. Exactly. How did you know that's what I was going to say? <laughs> um, we got our answer on Monday. And we had put a post out on my personal page requesting prayer for God's will. We were truly seeking God's direction, God's will in our life. And we wanted to be making sure our plans and our goals and our dreams were lining up with that will. So rather than, you know, making decisions for ourselves and trudging forward, we ask for God's direction and the answer to this phone call to be God's direction. And I truly believe it is. Uh, we were blessed greatly. Um, just gonna, I think I shared a little bit last Wednesday. I'm going to share a little bit more. That phone call um, could have been good or bad. It could have determined our future very quickly in a very great way. Um, we could have either been homeless or given the opportunity to continue pushing to sell our home. And we were given the gift and the blessing to push to sell our home. Um, the response to that phone call uh, was still a little nerving, so I'd like to ask that you guys please join us in prayer. We are going to list our home with a realtor. We are going to continue working on it as we can here this winter. That was the goal anyway. Um, Mountain Man had milled all of our lumber throughout the year, so as the winter set upon us, that was what we were going to do in our spare time was work on the inside. And our spare time is limited, but we are going to really embrace that and use it to the best of our abilities. But pray that our home sells quickly for us because it will eliminate a lot of future struggles and also just make life so much easier. And ultimately, we may end up um, living in a canvas wall tent, living in a tent of sorts, which will be perfectly okay by me because, uh, and, and even if we had gone homeless, we would have been okay with those circumstances. Either way, however, however the answer would have been given to us, we would have been okay because we knew we were following God's will. Living in the canvas wall tent for eight and a half months while we built our home was the absolute best time of my life. I never felt so free and so, uh, for lack of better terms, unweighted. I didn't have the weights of the world on my shoulder. We didn't have constant connection to the internet. We didn't have power. We didn't have running water. We didn't have junk. All of our junk, all of our stuff was in a storage unit for those eight and a half months. We lived out of a, a Rubbermaid tote. Each of us had our own Rubbermaid tote. It was simple. It was the simplest I've ever lived and honestly guys, I yearn to go back to that. It was just such a precious, precious time. So, moving forward, we will be building a tiny home or a small home, 20 foot by 20 foot home, and living very simply. So, God has given us an answer. We are going to push to sell this. Your prayers would be greatly appreciated. But what was funny is we got our answer, and I was talking to Tammy yesterday, and it was just weird how we all felt a weight and like this overwhelm. And it was because all of a sudden all the chores and tasks that need to get done here, that need to be completed for us to feel able to sell. And granted, there are people out there that are looking for semi-done homes so that they can finish it to their liking. So hopefully we will um, entice one of those people. But there's uh, some things that we definitely want to have finished before um, it really gets pushed heavily and Saturday we will be working on things, but it was just funny It was you know life had just blessed us God had just blessed us tremendously But we suddenly all just felt overwhelmed and we sat down and we just started talking about it for maybe 15 20 minutes and That overwhelm left because we had a plan We came up with a plan and guys there is so much to be said about plans. Good morning Deb Deb says peace in the storms of life. Yes, and you know what, um, and Deb is a good person to talk about that. Deb had the rug ripped out from under her a couple of years back and uh, has persevered and has been resilient and God has been there for her. So, you know, we all go through those storms. We all go through those moments of overwhelm, even when we're being blessed because there's just so much stuff coming at us at one time and we're human. So the thing is, guys, we really need to have structure. You know, some and and like I said in the notes below, 
we need to figure out what's going to work for us. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a thought. And what I share with you is what works for me. What works for me may not work for you, but the thing that you've got to keep in mind is that you can constantly keep fine tuning till you come up with what works wonderfully for you. And it's just perseverance and it's just resilience, which we will talk about. Diana says we moved out of a large house to a 36 foot fifth wheel for a year. If we could go back to living in the RV for a while, we would. Going rental shopping tomorrow. Awesome. Well, girl, we will keep praying. And and there is something to be said about that small space, that limited space, that limited amount of things. It just makes life so much easier. I was reading a book uh, where a, a fella said that he has seven outfits or 14. I think he said 14 outfits, and that's all he has. And um, some of the big entrepreneurs that are very successful wear the same clothing every day clean but that's what their wardrobe is it's the same thing why because it gives them one last thing to think about every morning when they're getting dressed and I just think that's funny but also very smart um, I could easily be a jeans and a t-shirt kind of girl or even a jeans and something crocheted you see me with all my little sweaters uh, those are the best thrift store finds I've ever found I love that kind of stuff so you you know you you make it simple in ways that works for you but I really feel it's important to have plans. I really feel that it's important to have goals. And I really feel it's important to have dreams. But I want to express very strongly, good morning, sweet mama Mona. I was showing your rolling pin a little earlier. Um, it is important, to me especially, um, maybe to some of you. And I think that by doing things this way, um, we eliminate a lot of struggles and headaches in our lives. Good morning, Terry. It is important that we seek God's direction in our dreams and in our plans and in our goals. You know, it's good to have these big, wild, crazy dreams, um, but if those dreams don't line up with God's will, those dreams are not gonna be a pleasant encounter for you. You will go through rough patches trying to experience those dreams while God is trying to redirect you back to where you need to be. So keep that in mind. We've all experienced that, I'm sure. And um, at this point in our lives, especially with the last three years we've been living, we want to be seeking God's will and direction in everything. And if that means that our dreams ultimately get squashed because it's not part of His plan, so be it. Because whatever He has in store for us will be bigger and better than any dream we could have ever imagined. And I truly believe that. I truly believe that. So, I've asked previously, what are your thoughts on goals and dreams and plans? Do you incorporate them into your life? Also, what is one habit that you guys are adding to your new year? I have a bunch. And um, there's two apps that you guys can join me on. Uh, for inspiration as well as for um, accountability partner. Um, Bible.com is, is free. It's online. You can um, log on there, create an account. You can choose your privacy levels. Um, what's really nice about it is you can be reading the Bible and you can be reading the King James Version and you can ask to see uh, the New Living Translation side by side. Uh, that way, if you're having problems understanding one version, you can see the other version. You can go through different versions. Um, it, it's awesome. I love it because sometimes I do get lost in the King James. I like reading the New Living Translation and sometimes for kicks and giggles just to see the simplicity of how the message is written. I'll look at that too depending on what I'm reading or what I'm researching or what I'm writing. Right now, I am really excited. I am writing a devotional that I hope to uh, have out before too long. It'll be a daily devotional, so there's 365 days that I've got to be writing for. So I'm working on that right now, and I'm excited because God is really giving me creative juices for that. But I would love to have you join me on there. Um, under Bible.com, you can search for me as Tammy Treyer. You can see what kind of stuff I'm reading. Uh, maybe it'll inspire you. The other app that I would love to have you join me on is Coach.me. 
um, one of the books I was reading mentioned that he uses this app. It was called something else previously and had been converted over to coach.me. And uh, it enables you to get reminders on habits that you want to create. And I think it is a really awesome tool because sometimes in order to create a habit, say I want a week long new habit to add, that every day I do something, but to get started, um, maybe for someone like you, that would be overwhelming to incorporate that that fast every day. And so what you can do is you can tell it to do it three days a week, remind you Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 a.m. or 12 p.m. or whatever, whatever suits you, and it reminds you on your phone. I need those reminders, even though I am goal oriented, I, I wear a lot of hats and I have a lot of um, divine um, interruptions. So with that being said, it's nice for me to have the reminder on my phone to do these things. And um, I'm finding that it's a really great tool for me and that I can incorporate it in different ways. So I want you guys, if you are um, have your smartphone and you utilize apps, to check this one out. You can also um, find me on there as Tammy Trier. And connecting allows you to see what each other's doing, how successful you're doing, and also to be able to just follow. So that might be something that will help you. But the links are down below. Um, also, I have Evernote listed because Evernote is a great way to track your notes. I track everything in Evernote. I have my schedule set up on Google Keep because it is separate from Evernote so that when I'm searching for something I don't get 20 days of my uh, to-dos in there. I keep it separate. I found this at the end of last year that that was a better way of doing things. So I keep Google Keep as my to-do list and I can check things off. And then I use Evernote for all of my notes and um, both of them are easily searchable which makes it priceless compared to using a pen and paper. Um, I used to be a pen and paper girl up until about three years ago. So I was very traditional. I like writing on pen and paper. I do my journal on pen and paper and I do my drawing in there also. Tammy says Evernote is my best new best friend. Yes. Oh my goodness. When I'm out and somebody wants, you know, sharing something with me, I can really quick slam it into Evernote instead of writing it on a little slip of paper. Little slips of paper get lost. And then later you got to go back and record it into Evernote anyway. What I like about Evernote is it syncs from my iPhone to my iPad to my laptop. And that means wherever I am, my materials are with me. So I'm never at a loss for my information. You can back it up. Um, it's just a very priceless tool. It has saved me hours, really, hours of time. And um, those are the things that I have incorporated. So I use Google Keep, I use Evernote, I use Coach.me, and I use my water app. I am reading a book right now that I will be sharing with you soon. I am learning a new technique on healing and this woman is beyond amazing. I am just totally flabbergasted with what I'm learning from her and I want to uh, do a little more research. Good morning Sylvia and uh, good morning Holly. Uh, I want to be able to really get a full understanding of things before I share it with you so that will be coming in the next couple weeks. But. Um, Water, as you know, I've been talking about it all year long. Tammy reminds me every Wednesday, and I've been getting very faithful with it. Thank you, Tammy. You've started to create a new habit for me, and so has the Water app helped me greatly because it reminds me, and I need that. I get too busy, and unless I'm really working out hard, I don't have a craving for water. So, and I can't add stuff to my water other than lemon juice or lime juice. Um, natural. I can't add packets to my water to flavor it because I just can't. My body will fight all of that garbage in them. So I have to push myself. So I use that app as a reminder and I try to shut off all my other apps because these are the things that I want interrupting my time because they are good interruptions. And 
I just wanted to share those with you so you guys can check them out and see if they will work for you. Um, what's important with your goals and your plans and your dreams is to not overwhelm yourself. We have a whole year. It's only the first full week of January. When you write out your goals for the year, it's good to have a list of what you want to accomplish for the year, but then have a separate note for January. How can you break one of those goals down in January um, to enable you to do baby steps to accomplish these tasks? Uh, redirecting ourselves is important. Like I said, I hit overwhelm on Monday or yesterday. We were all just exhausted more than anything. Uh, I wasn't getting good sleep, and we've just uh, been pushing a little bit. So, and I guess maybe waiting for our answer also was a little tiring maybe unbeknownst to us. So we were just tired. So when you get a little off track and you're tired and um, you, you may slip up for a day, give yourself grace. The new beginnings of this year enable us to start fresh the next day. And I think that's really important to keep that in mind. That's not a tool for us to constantly slip up. That's a tool for us to keep moving forward. It's all how you look at it. You know, somebody might say, well, that means that you can screw up every day and start all over and keep starting all over. Well, yeah, because I'm moving forward by doing that. If I stay stuck where I'm at and I'm not trying every day, or we're going backwards because we allow ourselves to focus backwards, you're not helping yourself. So a new beginning every day. Give yourself grace and keep focusing forward. Our plans and our goals um, ultimately need to be broken down. My to-do list is very small. I have a lot of businesses that we run. I have my web design business, which is Treyer Designs. We have Treyer Wilderness. We have Treyer Construction. Um, I know I'm missing something. But with those businesses, that enables me to do a lot of things in a day. But rather than have the full list of all that I've got to get accomplished on a weekly basis on each of those businesses, I have a separate note for each of those businesses. And each day I pull in some of those tasks into my daily to-do. That way I don't have to be so overwhelmed when I look at my to-do list. If you're constantly in overwhelm from looking at a to-do list or looking at your goals, you've got to break it down and you've got to find a new way of incorporating that into your schedule and, and, and looking at things because if you're in overwhelm you will not accomplish things. Overwhelm is not a pleasant place to be. Overwhelm is not where we want to be. So if you are in overwhelm, figure out how to break it down. One of the new habits that I have added to my list this year is drawing. I love to draw. I love to do pencil art. I love to do black ink. and. Um, what I have done is I set time aside to draw, but let's just say my schedule. Are you gonna please start that if you would please? That'd be great. Thanks. Huh? Yeah, because I'm still live. We'll shut it off afterwards then. Thank you. The solar alarm's going off, so he was asking about the generator. We need to turn the generator. It is gray. It's very gray. It's been very gray, but we're supposed to get sunshine for the next five days, so I'm going to be repowered. Yes. Okay, um, let me think about what I was saying here. Um, okay, drawing. I was talking about drawing. I have time set aside to make a habit to draw, but my schedule gets hijacked often. And that is one thing that I would allow to get hijacked. However, what I am doing and what I'm learning to do is incorporate that, if it gets hijacked, into my devotional time or into my journaling time. Um, I may not be able to get my full amount of time in to maybe draw a whole picture, but I might get some ideas set aside in my journal or in my devotional or Bible study time. And by doing that, especially during my devotionals, it opens your mind up. It allows you to receive things. It allows you to remember things so much better. So I have decided that if that is one thing that gets hijacked, I'm going to incorporate it into other areas that I won't allow to get hijacked so that I still get that time in. And 
it's it's all how you want to do things and it's all a matter of what is most important to you I told you guys last year living with intention you need to figure out what is most important to you and you need to focus on those things and again the things that are most important to you you need to make sure they line up with God's will um, I exercise. Exercising is a thing that is not able to be hijacked. My time with God is not able to be hijacked. Um, my work time, my time with my family is not able to be hijacked. And those are things that I hold on tight to. The other things I will shuffle around. And that is why you don't want to overwhelm yourself. If you want to try to make a new habit to um, read daily, and that gets hijacked on a regular basis. It may be because your schedule's too too full. So maybe breaking it up that you read four days a week instead of seven, or shuffling your schedule. But if you have something that you really enjoy and it's getting hijacked a lot, it could be because you just have too much crammed in your schedule. So we need to work on that. You need to figure out how your schedule is going to best work for you and figure out the things that are getting hijacked. Is it because you're letting them get hijacked? Is it because you're not putting enough value on them? Is it because you're wasting your time in front of Facebook perusing and seeing what everybody else is doing when you would really rather be reading? Those are the things you got to analyze. So you got to analyze again all the time what is hijacking your time. At this point, I have eliminated pretty much all of my hijacks and I focus on what is important. Um, those things that used to take up all my time no longer do. I do not worry about my emails, I do not worry about social media. And forgive me, I know I should be sharing more on our Trier Wilderness page, but I have set it up that I visit with you guys every Wednesday. I share a blog post once a week. I share a podcast every other Friday. I share a newsletter, and I share, I'm going to be starting to share inspirational and motivational quotes. So, you know, with everything I do, I try to be very strategic, and I try to make it good for you guys, but I also try to make it, um, sane for me and that's important we need to make sure that we are keeping our sanity through our chaos right <laughs> so I ask in the beginning for all of you that are joining me um, what is important to you what are you are you incorporating plans and goals and dreams into your new year and what are some habits that you're trying to form it's it's really important to um, vocalize those things or if you don't want to share them here write them down because writing those things down make them more of a constant. It Once you put it out there and you write it down, it now becomes something that is concrete. You've expressed it. Now it's making it happen. Okay. Now, I want to share some stuff with you guys on resilience. Um, you hear me talk about perseverance. You hear me talk about resilience. These are all big terms. They're used all the time. But what I need you to realize is that these terms help us in everything we do not just in setting goals for a special vacation or exercising or losing weight it's a life skill that if you are in a survival situation believe it or not what you are setting up now in handling your to-dos and handling your schedule will actually help you handle survival situations and odd circumstances so keep that in mind. Jill says, I just want to get healthy. Amen, sister. Me too. And we're gonna. Tammy says, better eating and budgeting habits will be a goal here. Awesome. Tammy, on, uh, every Friday I balance my checkbook. Every Friday I reevaluate my budget. And that is, as a habit, it's part of my reminders. And I've also set it up for the mountain boy so that at a young age he is also getting that reminder and it's becoming concrete it's something that once he leaves here it's something that he's going to think about all the time and that's important so that's a really awesome thing and um, all of these things we can remind ourselves of um, whether it's written down or whether it's using an app um, every morning uh, you could just 
go through and look at your reminders of the things you want to accomplish if you're not a person that wants to use apps or you don't have a smartphone then just use a piece of paper and write it down and make sure you look at it every day Rachel says I need to incorporate more things that bring me joy yes and that's the beauty of having a well-organized schedule and a well-organized plan because when you eliminate all the time hogs of social media and whatever they may be for you it allows you to fill those gaps with things that give you joy joy is being outside for me joy is drawing joy is doing leather work and doing creative things because those creative things inspire me to do other things and they just give me joy so those are the things that exactly that you want to be sure you are incorporating these are things that you don't want to live without these are things that cause you to live with intention good morning Jackie she says good to have a schedule and a reason to be accountable it makes you feel good about yourself to accomplish those tasks exactly amen and and the more we accomplish them the better off we will feel and the better we will be prepared to keep incorporating new things and getting and seeing what things are in our lives that we want to get rid of Sylvia says downsizing my clutter and living more simply is high on my list perfect perfect and I I am actually going to go through our house for the second time and even simplify things more so for those of you that are part of our yard sale group um, I will be listing things on there maybe later today if not tomorrow and also down in the description is our Facebook group if you haven't joined join there because we'll be doing I'm gonna be trying to incorporate that a little more as well being that we've said what we've just said and that I believe it was Jackie that just said about um, how it makes you feel when you accomplish those tasks I want to read something with you that was in my email box this week uh -oh, if I can find it oh I took a picture of it I'm trying to be organized here so while I'm on here I'm not searching for stuff I follow um, a clutter free uh, email uh, online and uh, I at the I'm at the moment having a loss of the dot com I will try to share it but this is something that one of their people said about their life after they've decluttered and it's just it regardless what your goals are I want you to see the joy in accomplishing them out of what I'm gonna read to you she says yesterday I carpooled with my husband and while driving home he said he had invited his cousin her husband and four kids over to dinner at our house they were driving through Phoenix on their way to Texas didn't think they would have time to stop but were ahead of schedule I responded fun we haven't seen them in forever and then it hit me a year ago I would have completely freaked out I would have had to rush inside and start frantically sticking piles of paper and random clutter in our spare bedroom I would have completely closed off the master bedroom screamed at my boys to pick up their rooms and would have had to tackle the kitchen I would be so anxious and exhausted by the time they arrived that I would be a wreck and probably look the way I felt I would not have enjoyed the visit and by the time they left I would have felt like a total failure not anymore I have had the step program for over a year my house was clean and neat my command center works and our family routines keep on track my boys do their morning contributions and that keeps their rooms organized so last night my husband grabbed some pizza and we had a great night sharing family stories the more we create good habits and the more we put things into place to make our lives easier regardless what it is whether it's in your kitchen whether it's clutter whether it's learning to sit down and read a good book the more we put those things in place and the more we hold tight to what we value the more that will be you and I want you to focus on whatever your biggest task is this year the biggest thing you want to accomplish because oftentimes what happens is we have too many things on our list to accomplish I want you to focus on the most important one and I want you to focus on it and accomplish it because if you have 10 things on your list and you're trying to spread yourself out to accomplish those things you're gonna fail because you're gonna get overwhelmed but I want you to one process one at a time make it a habit make it something concrete bring your joy back and then work on number two 
We have two comments here. Let me see. Diana says, researching and streamlining the supplements I need for now, taking them regularly and evaluating their effect effectiveness. Also, finally, starting my introductory herbalism course. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I don't know if I can click on that to see more. Oh, it's... Okay, I can't see the whole thing, so if there's more, I will respond later, but that's awesome. And, and that's just it, is working on those small things. Get them aside, get them accomplished, get them working, and then move on to the next thing so that you can give your whole self to that next thing. Candy says, I did a Proverbs 31 class on downsizing for one thing, and it really made a difference. Need to do this again. Yeah, you know, if you're going to declutter, start in one room. Don't... Uh, us ladies especially men maybe some men may be the same men usually are focused on one thing at a time where women will go in the bathroom and we find something that belongs in the bedroom and we will exit the bathroom go to the bedroom and start decluttering the bedroom when we started in the bathroom right I know I'm not alone I know that so you got to learn to when you're in that one room and you find something for the bedroom make a pile for the bedroom stay focused on the bathroom declutter the bathroom then take your pile for the bedroom and take it to the bedroom and maybe start decluttering the bedroom again don't overwhelm yourself because the more you overwhelm the more likely you are to quit right so keep that in mind was that not a good testimony of how we can change our lives from one year to the next that could be from one week to the next guys depending on what the tasks are and getting your family involved is key if you've got young children I like the way they said contributions instead of chores. You know, you say chore and all of a sudden you get them, you know, from them or words or grumping and whatever, body language. So when you say contributions, you know, everybody wants to feel like they are valued and part of something. So they are contributing and that's really cool. I hear you, Tammy. You're not alone. She says so guilty of that. And you know what? We all are, but it's fun when you catch yourself because I'm one of those two. If I'm cleaning the house, I will I will just keep circling because I'm going from one spot to the next where if I as I learned to focus on the one area, it made it so much easier and everything got accomplished. I'd accomplish everything, but I'd have myself wore out by the end of the day. So that's the other thing. If you keep yourself more organized and and structured while doing things, you also eliminate tiring yourself out. Rachel says, that's how I put stuff away, group into locations. My house is too tiny to not stay on top of things. Yeah, and you know what? Even if it's big, I find that people with big homes have much more space to stack and store things and let it get out of hand too. So stay on top of things and learn how to work in one area at a time. In anything you do, accomplish what you're working on first and then move to the next thing. You know, I used to be a multitasking queen. I could still be if I'd allow myself to be, but I don't want to be. Because in multitasking, I didn't, I, there are some things that I can, uh, with my computer work, I can start it and it'll run in the background while I'm doing something else. So that multitasking is okay. But when you're trying to multitask and accomplish 10 things at once, how many of you accomplish them? Not many, right? You, you start all those things and you don't even finish one because you're too spread out. So multitasking, as much as, you know, the more you hear about that, again, that's going to be one of those things where you hear mixed perspectives. You've got to figure out what works for you. I have found, too, that multitasking exhausts me. One of my favorite, favorite new habits that I created last year is waking up slowly and starting my day slowly. I used to get out of bed, my feet would hit the floor, and I would be like an absolute lunatic just going from one thing to the next and accomplishing things. And that was great. We got a lot done here. But at what cost? So I enjoy my slow mornings. I get up, I get my coffee or my tea. Oh, and thank you, Rachel. I'm drinking my tea today. Uh, I get my, my tea and I sit down, I read my Bible, I do my devotions, I start my day slow, I enjoy my family, my husband doesn't get it. My husband thinks that if you're not moving, you're lazy, you're being lazy. And that's, 
his, but I'm teaching him. I'm teaching him to learn the beauty and the simplicity of just not doing anything. He's he's got the ADHD thing going on, and so he's constant motion. So I'm I'm trying to teach him, and he's starting to read and and do some little studies of his own, and I'm seeing and noticing him falling into that routine and enjoying it. So, you know, even people that are fast paced like that, there's nothing wrong with it. But I think that you will gain much joy in having a slow part of your day. You know, it doesn't all have to be that way. But my slow mornings, I won't give them up for anything, guys. Nothing. Now, I have some other fun stuff I want to read to you. Um, I I love to read. I, I have always read... Um, all kinds of great stories but over the last several years I've really gotten into a lot of self-help uh, motivation um, inspiration business I always read a lot of business for my for my varying businesses so I stay up with the trade but I like that kind of stuff and I like self-growth I like to get ideas from other people because um, it allows you to kind of blend and mishmash a lot of variety of other people's ideas into what works for you and that's how I have found what works for me is by understanding what other people do that are successful and um, I eliminate you having to worry about that because I share it with you <laughs> but um, one of the books that I read I've read a couple of his actually because his books are short but they're very um, insightful and there's a lot to be gained from them. It is uh, Martin Meadows, you will find a link below, but the one book that I'm gonna um, quote from is Grit. How to keep going when you want to give up. How many of you have been at that point where you're ready to give up, you're overwhelmed, you're tired, you're wore out, you're stressed, we all hit that point. And by the way, I would love to ask you guys, if you are gaining from this video or any of my videos, please share them. There's a share button below. Share it with others. I am trying to reach more people this year and share our knowledge, share our community. You guys are awesome. I love how you pray for each other. I love how you communicate with, that, with each other. It absolutely warms my heart when I see you guys talking amongst each other while I'm chatting. It's awesome. It's awesome. We have grown such amazing amazing community here and a comfortable place I think so this talks about how to develop psychological resilience <sighs> Jill Bell said she gave up a while ago well we're gonna fix that Jill uh, we did too you know we'll be honest we've been honest the mountain man shared you know on his YouTube on his YouTube video you know we hit a point he hit a point where he lost faith and he said that he wasn't proud of himself for that but he he lost faith in our situation and I don't know which is worse losing faith or hitting a point of total numbness I was I was totally numb I totally did not know which direction to go in uh, I was emotionally physically and mentally numb and um, we all hit those spots so guys please don't don't stay there and don't feel like you're alone and don't feel like there isn't um, something else for you and something else that you can move into okay um, so I will do my best to help you th with that because we all hit those spots and a lot of it sometimes is just overwhelm and um, lack of direction and we we all hit those spots and and the other thing that is extremely huge in that is prayer the power of prayer guys the power of prayer is huge I cannot tell you and that and and having that communication and that that time with God you know sometimes that might look like you yelling at him and being very frustrated in your situation that's okay uh, he's no different than your earthly father. He wants to have the same kind of relationship. So, you know, we have the ability to go directly to him and talk to him. And that is important. And uh, that's where I get a lot of my direction. That's where, okay, that's where I get all of my direction. And, you know, in that numb spot that I was in, I wasn't hearing his voice. It's because I was just so foggy. And I needed to uh, get rid of that fog 
and I needed to really focus on my communications with him and that made such a huge difference. Diana says prayer is truly what has sustained me so very very grateful for it. Yes me too and and what has pulled me out of low places and also having amazing prayer warriors many of you are my prayer warriors and I am so thankful for that because you know you can feel the release of other people's prayers truly when someone is lifting you in prayer and really um, wholeheartedly wanting to help you you can feel the release of those prayers you can feel the peace come over you and it, it's powerful so when you are in a place where you don't have that ability on your own trust me I've called on several people and asked them to pray for me because I couldn't get it together and and Jill you're not alone I will be praying for you sister Rachel says choosing prayer and trust is so important exactly exactly and you know I didn't lose my faith my faith was strong but I was questioning my own direction I was questioning my own place in the mix of the faith and the trust and that was because um, I wasn't in good communication I guess with God and once I got back into that good communication with God I gained all that back because he gave it to me so just keep that in mind now psychological resilience is the ability to adapt to stress and adversity two reasons why many people give up before they achieve their goals and I truly believe this is a truth um, Perseverance and resilience to me are very uh, strong and, and go very hand in hand. You know, when things get tough, I pull into God and I, 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 I feel a strength about me that enables me to be more perseverant and more resilient in what I'm doing. Um, not that I don't weaken, you know, that's a truth. And even your strongest people will weaken. And, and maybe not all of them will admit to it, but we, we weaken, and, and that's human nature. And whew, there was a stink bug. I thought I felt something creeping on me. Um, so it's, it's important to have prayer warriors that you can call upon when you do weaken, because sometimes we don't have that inner strength. We need something else, and that's awesome that we need God and you can call upon him yourself and you can also ask people to pray for you there is a great power in multiple people praying at one time that's why we recruited so many last week to pray on our behalf for God's will and awesome Tammy I'm glad to hear that Tammy said she'll be praying for Jill too now studies show that grit is strongly associated with conscientiousness people who are conscientious are thorough careful, vigilant, organized, efficient, industrious, and self-controlled. They are usually reliable and systematic. When taken to extreme, they are perfectionists and or workaholics. So, if that doesn't describe you, that is okay. But what is going to happen is, as you are conscientious of your goals and your plans and your dreams, and your to-do list and wanting to and your desire to want to accomplish things you will slowly add these things in now notice that it says when taken to the extreme it is creates perfectionism and workaholics so you gotta find a balance because I was I wasn't necessarily the perfectionist but I was the workaholic and I don't want to be that anymore because it zaps my joy. So learning to become some of these things is good because it gives us self-control. It gives us a level of efficiency so that we're not tiring ourselves out. We're not wearing ourselves out. And it enables us to be stronger so that a year later we can look back and see how we would have been like that other woman and it applies to everything we do so I think it's really important skills to have and that's why we're working so hard on living with intention and new beginnings and refocusing ourselves because if the power goes out and you don't have power for three days 
how are you going to handle it? And if it's even worse than that, that you're stuck in the middle of the national forest, you have no idea which direction leads what direction, you have no idea where you are, but you know enough to keep yourself alive and well till someone finds you. You know, whatever the case may be, all of these baby steps lead up to being able to handle those bigger, crazy events with ease and with a lot less stress. And that's what I want to teach you. Diana says, I know the feeling, Jill. I will also be praying for you. Awesome. Yeah, we're all there, Jill. And last year, you know, the mountain, thankfully the mountain man and I were not in the same place at the same time ever. We were always in those lows and highs, so we were able, and that's a blessing from God too, to help us keep each other straight. And that's awesome, you know, to have that support system. And that's what I want this to be, is our support system. And sometimes I think once a week isn't enough, but we're going to concentrate on that. Now, there are several ways to become more conscientious, and that is focusing on improving specific areas of conscientiousness. For instance, creating a habit to organize your desk and clean it every week, or focus on being punctual. Yeah, who else has that problem? So all these things that we want to create into new successful habits, we need to work on one at a time. Become successful at them, keep going, focus on them though, and not giving up. Every day is a new beginning. Make daily plans. Organize your life by setting plans and sticking to them. Carry a, a small notebook with you or a phone app. And doing that and being persistent with that will create a habit of being conscientious of your time, your time being wasted, how you're using your time. Using technology to remind yourself of important things. If you have a bad case of forgetting about things to do, use Evernote, right Tammy, right? I mean, that, anybody using Evernote, oh my goodness. That is just like, when I, was, when I was sick in 2016, if I did not have Evernote, I would, I, I can't even begin to imagine the mess, the huge mess I would be trying to remedy now because of the things that I forgot to do or that were new that I needed to remember and would never have recorded. So Evernote is priceless. Keep your word. If you promise someone something, no matter how small it is, do it. People will think of you as a reliable person, which in turn makes you better at sticking to the promises you make to yourself. That's a pretty good um, thought process, too. You know, the more we carry that character trait through, the better we will be in the long run. Consider decluttering. Have we not all talked about that? Decluttering is priceless. Read about minimalism, the philosophy of less is more that suggests owning fewer things and focusing more on the experiences. I love how he puts that because that is what I did in 2018 and that is what has enabled me to create such amazing new habits and come into 2019 with a clear head. Terry says, I keep praying for healing and not giving up on my marriage. Prayers do work. Jill, don't give up on your prayers. Awesome, Terry. Very good words. Jill, we love you. Okay. Um, scientists define physiological resilience as flexibility in response to changing situational demands and the ability to bounce back from negative emotional experiences. How many of you go about your day and all of a sudden something hijacks it? Your children, your spouse, somebody stops in, your car breaks down. You know, learning to roll and recover from those things instead of reacting to those things makes you resilient. And dear Jesus, thank you for making me resilient early in my life. Being able to roll with the punches has made life so much easier for me in our experiences here, in raising an autistic child, um, in business, everything. And when you learn to roll with that, that is one key thing that will really remove some weights from your shoulders when you learn to roll with the things that occur in your life. Looking at some of them as divine intervention, some of those breaks are truly divine. When the neighbor stops over and you get to sit and chat with her for a half an hour and it just rekindles your joy and your spirit and then the rest of your day is so much more productive. Have you ever experienced that? 
rather than sitting there and watching the clock and panicking the whole time the neighbor stops by and worrying about what you're not getting done because they're interfering with your schedule. See the difference? See the difference in joy versus stress? I want to I, I, I wanna help you guys because I want to share with you what I've learned over the years. People who are resilient experience positive emotions even during stressful events which helps them quickly rebound despite adversity. So what we are adding to our lives with new habits and, and, and successfully putting small plans and goals together to not overwhelm ourselves, we are really adding resilience, perseverance all of those things to our lives and enabling us to be able to bounce back and to roll with the punches just like that woman did when all of a sudden she had dinner guests. To be able to roll with something like that and have peace about it is such a fun thing and that is one of the things that will bring joy back to your life. Here's something interesting that he shares. Consequently, the most important skill to build resilience is to learn how to turn your struggles into something positive. Have we heard that before? The primary technique of doing this is reframing. He says reframing is a way of turning bad experiences and concepts into more positive ones. Instead of thinking about your problems as something that prevents you from achieving your goal, you can turn them into opportunities to grow your goal. So sometimes those struggles that do happen, happen for a reason. Um, when you're struggling to keep going, you can reframe your struggles as part of an incredible story you'll tell when you achieve your goal. So when we achieve selling this, all of the chaos and the craziness, and you've seen us, you've seen us turn our chaos upside down into something positive and using it as a stepping stone to push us forward in a great way. And that is really, really important, guys. In in making life a better place because if we focus on those hardships and those things as a negative we'll stay in that negative spot and it might even uh, you know we might allow the enemy to pull us back into never never land where we don't want to be you don't want to be going backwards you don't want to be looking backwards unless you are connecting the dots to see how you got where you are and that my friends is fun I can see that when I look back, I can see all the dots, and it's really, really amazing to me, really awing, really eye-opening, and I just, I love, I love how God works. So you can combine these techniques with visualization. Imagine a day you've achieved your goal and remind yourself of all your struggles and the obstacles you've had to overcome. And for many of you, that may be the key thing, because sometimes when you have obstacles, it's very easy to want to turn and, and abandon. But those obstacles oftentimes, one, the obstacle could be keeping you from heading in the wrong direction. I've used the analogy of when you're going to work and you get a flat tire and then you later get to work and find out that there was a massive 10 car pile up in the direction you would have been heading at that time and you avoided death. You know, that's an extreme one. But these, these are divine interventions and divine obstacles that will ultimately push us forward and keep us alive, keep us going. So it says when you go back to the present moment, you'll see the problems from a new, more empowering perspective. This will build your resilience. The other thing I'm going to suggest is when you hit roadblocks, really heavy roadblocks, to just walk away. If you're overwhelmed and totally numb like I was, by walking away, my, my place is in the outdoors. And when I'm out there by myself, I can just take it all in. I can bring in God into my, my mind, my spirit, you know, and just totally just remove myself from the struggles. And when I do that, I find such peace and, and clarity and often direction. And I renew myself, even if it's for 15 minutes, even if it's for five minutes, whatever you have to spare. And that reminds me to tell you something. It is very important that you do not fill your day every minute of every day. When I create my calendar, I have gaps in my schedule because we have things that hijack us and things that shuffle and things that change and things that take a little longer than we anticipate. If you have every minute of every day blocked up, 
you're gonna hit overwhelm and you're gonna hit disappointment. You wanna have celebrations every day. If that's making a goal of reading five pages in a book, celebrate it. And tomorrow do it again. And keep celebrating. That's the kind of the cool thing with that app is that you record that coach me that I was talking about. You record it and you can see your progress. Where when I'm using Google Keep or Evernote for that, I can't see my progress. And not that I need to see it, but it's encouraging when you do see it. And the other thing is they say 21 to 30 some days, it depends on the individual, that you can create a new habit. So I'm watching those days because I want to create a new habit and move on to my next new one that I want to create. I'm creating joyful habits in my life. Just like Rachel and many of you said, you want to pull those joys back into your life and, and be able to have happiness in your days. And that's how you're going to do it. Now, this is something, I know that I had mentioned something earlier that triggered the thought on this. This is a quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger. I loved his one, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. That has always been one of mine. But this one is uh, on the same lines. Strength does not come from winning. Your struggles develop your strengths. And when you go through hardships and decide not to surrender, that is strength. So Jill, you're moving every day. All of us are moving forward every day. We're moving. We are thinking about new things. We are thinking about our futures. We are not surrendering and we are pushing forward and we are strengthening ourselves and that's what it's about and even if you have to start a new and have a new beginning tomorrow because something happened today you're still moving in the right direction so celebrate that celebrate that I'm gonna put this quote in the description later so that you guys have it because I think that's a one a good one to write down another habit I have is a list of mantras that come up on um, my screen in the morning and I read over them you can put them on your mirror you can do whatever in, in your car one of the ladies I work with used to have sticky notes all over her dashboard with the things that she wanted to remind herself and they were positive things you know and and also maybe some things that she wanted to make sure she didn't forget to accomplish we need to remind ourselves sometimes. I've told you guys many times before, we can be our worst enemy by the things that we say to ourselves. And when we're down and when we're low and when we are overwhelmed and when we hit a roadblock and we're close to surrender, you know, you gotta, you got to remind yourself that you've already made it that far. So we've got to be our best coaches and our best cheerleaders. And, and then I want you to come here Wednesdays and I want you to cheer each other on and I want you to share your accomplishments and your defeats because as it says without defeats we're not gonna grow those it's just part of life guys and I read somebody else I don't remember who said this this year but I do know who said this it was one of my best friends in one of her Facebook posts she said that every year you know everybody looks for the new year for a new start a new beginning and, and a better year but the reality is we can make every year a better year because every year is going to have ups and downs and we just need to traverse them and this is how we do it versus surrendering and staying in the game and moving forward and knowing where we can put our focus on and who we can call to when we're in a spot and that is both God and friends you know it's really a powerful thing to have godly friends that you can call upon to really lift you up and pray for you and just know that they have your back there is power in good quality friends and sometimes in life that can be really hard to find but I guarantee you you can at least get a handful of them and those friends are the most valuable tools as well and uh, I, I pray that you each have that and so, give me some hearts. Did you get something out of this today? Does it give you a little bit of direction? And again, when you're making your plans and setting your goals and you have your dreams, baby steps, guys. Draw them out. Draw out what you think it's going to take to get to accomplish that goal. And push that aside. Review it weekly. Review it monthly. But on your day-to-day -day basis, what do you need to do to make that 
happen in a baby step. That's how you will avoid overwhelm. And just keeping a plan, keeping a schedule. Um, I'm just going to give you a little overview. I write my blog posts on Monday. I've made it a habit to write every day for at least a half an hour. If that goes to an hour, I'm okay with that because I don't have my schedule so tight that I can't breathe. If I get on a writing um, spurt and i got a lot of juices flowing, I'm just going to keep writing. But I have to write a minimum of a half an hour every day. I record my podcast once a week. If I have lots of uh, healthy juices going and I've got multiple shows I can record in it at a time, I will do that. Then I'm ahead of the game. So breaking things up, that way on Mondays I can bake my bread. Or like today, after the, sh after the show, I can uh, download it and get it ready to upload to YouTube while it's doing all that. I can make my desserts and things. So break out your day so that it's not just all humdrum. That you're doing things periodically throughout your day that give you joy. It doesn't have to be all work and no play. And if you avoid all the time hogs, you will have so much more time to do the joyful things. And I want to remind you guys, both men and women, you should not feel guilty for doing something for you. Because the more you nurture you in an unselfish way, the more joy you will have in your life and the more committed to the other things you will be because you are filling yourself with the things that you need and you're nurturing yourself. That half an hour in the morning of just slow rising, oh my goodness guys, I can't tell you how phenomenal that is. That required me to get up a half an hour earlier, but you know what? That is so worth it. So I have a lot more to share, but we're going to save it for next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love that you are sharing things. I want to hear you share more of how things are going as we progress because as we go through this we will see growth in each other and we will be able to help each other uh, me included you guys like I said you guys feed my soul too and and your ideas are often uh, a really nice addition to what I'm doing so we're gonna keep sharing I'm gonna say a prayer here Thank you for your podcast and thank you for your prayers for us. I've come close to throwing in the towel, but God took it and tells me to hang on and not give up. So I still have the towel and not giving up. Good. Use that towel to wipe your brow, my friend. When it gets hot and heavy and you want to throw it in, pull into God and do something that gives you joy and keep going. Every step you take, every baby step you take towards your goals, Every effort you make is never wasted. So keep that towel to wipe your brow, Terry, because I know you're going to make it, and I know you're going to do fine, and you can count on our continued prayers. Hey, Brian, good to see you. I didn't know you were on here. Thank you. So I'm going to say a prayer for us this week, and then I will send you on your way. You guys have been with me for a long time today. So, Father God, I just thank you for what you are doing in all of our lives. You are helping us to see where we can make positive changes. You are seeing where we might be stuck and where we might need help. And you are helping us to form a community of friends and people that are willing to help one another, pray for one another, build on each other, which is huge because we all need that. We need a positive community of fellowship where we can come together and, and know that we will gain and, and not be uh, harmed for sharing our ideas. And, and Lord, you show us daily that it's a constant effort to pull into you. It's a constant effort to improve ourselves. It's something that we get a new beginning at every day. And Lord, I just ask you to give everyone watching this and our audience the courage to get up every day, regardless what they're going through, and just do something small to move them towards the next day. You know, there are many people dealing with health issues and emotional issues and physical struggles and financial struggles, marriage struggles, and Lord, these are heavy, heavy things, but through you, 
everything is possible and we can conquer anything if we keep our focus on you and and take your direction daily and Lord I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around all these people Lord be with Jill and just strengthen her and be with everyone here and strengthen them Lord we have a huge huge prayer list in our description I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around each of them they all have very very different needs but you've been meeting their needs we shared Courtney's um, celebration last week what a testament to you and what you do in our lives and what you can do for each of us Lord I just ask that you show all of those on our prayer list your presence your miracles your love and your mercies and grace and Lord I just ask that you strengthen everybody for the rest of their week and their walk may they look to you for answers and may they look to you when they stumble may they look to you when they have celebrations and and Lord just be be present in their lives and Lord I just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives for the miracles you've worked for us and just for blessing me with the right words every week to share with such an amazing growing community I love you and I thank you for the miracles you're gonna do in each of our lives and what you're gonna do we ask this in Jesus holy and precious name amen okay guys thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join me thank you for inspiring and encouraging me to do what I do and for following us and take some time today to write down if you haven't some plans and goals that you have for this year and then map it out how you would like to accomplish those if you need help ever with anything you're working on please reach out and PM me or uh, email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. I just thought of something. I, I'm going to take a few seconds to just share this. Um, Ms. Homesteader reached out with, to me in an email. She is Courtney's mother. And she shared pictures of Courtney. She is such a beautiful young girl. I just, I'm so excited to to have people ask for prayer but then to follow it up and share themselves and their lives with us it just it just makes it so complete and so awesome and I just I really love it I didn't get a chance to respond to her but Kelly when you watch this thank you and uh, this was her morning reading when she shared this with me and I just wanted to send you off with this prepared but not forgotten isn't it wonderful that wheat is not ground forever eventually the milling process ends and the grain is perfect for baking into bread as you wake this morning you may have felt like the grain threshing and milling by trials the moment will come however when the threshing ends and you will be prepared with patience faith and humility that only the milling can create in your life just as a farmer knows what is required for each type of grain God knows what preparation is essential for each person, for each one of us guys. He knows exactly what you need, so be patient and trust in Him. Bread, corn, is bruised because He will not ever be threshing it, nor break it with the wheel of His cart, nor bruise it with His horsemen. Isaiah 28, 28. God whispered to me that these words would be of comfort for you and your family today. And I wanted to share them with you because it pertains to us all. And I thought that they were really awesome words. And none of the devotionals seemed to fit. And it was really funny. Right before I went live, I opened her email and saw that. So like I said, God divinely plants my words every week to you guys. And I just... We all go through struggles, we all have down times, but keep focusing forward, keep looking to your new beginnings, and keep trying. Keep persevering, and you will build resilience, and you will build new habits, and you will build joy, and you will build happiness in your life. It all takes work, and it all takes a conscious effort. And the more we consciously focus on what is important, the happier we will be. So guys, have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. God bless.